Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at Absan Landfill, which is a deck built around some of these land synergy creatures introduced in the latest anthology expansion. Terravor being the main one, a 3 mana 0 0 with Trample, whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of land cards in all graveyards, which can definitely get out of hand pretty quickly. And then we've got the Knight of the Reliquary as a 3 mana 2 2 human knight, saying the knight gets plus 1 plus 1 for each land card in your graveyard, so this one is not symmetrical, and you can tap the knight and sacrifice a forest or a plains to search your library for any land card and put it on the battlefield, and then shuffle your library, so it can even be used to ramp if you make sure to float mana before sacrificing the land in question. So both of these cards want us to have plenty of lands in our graveyard, Terravor also looks at the opponent's graveyard, and to help us accomplish it we've got a bunch of these 2 drops that will put cards in our graveyard. We've got Meyer Triton as a 2 mana 2 1 death touch that when it enters the battlefield mills the top 2 cards of our library into our graveyard. We've got Glowspore Shaman as a 2 mana 3 1 that when it enters the battlefield puts the top 3 cards of our library into our graveyard. And we can also decide to put a land card from our graveyard on top of our library. And we've got Binding of the Titans which is symmetrical. Each player puts the top 3 cards of their library into their graveyard, so it's even better with Terravor. And then on the second chapter we can exile up to 2 target cards from graveyards, and for each creature card exiled this way we gain 1 life, so we can use this as a bit of graveyard hate, and usually want to make sure to keep lands in the graveyards, so our Terravor doesn't shrink. And then on the third chapter we can return target creature or land card from our graveyard to our hand, so that's another way of potentially finding Terravor or Knight of the Reliquary if we milled it with our other effects. And then at 1 mana we also have the full playset of Elvish Reclaimer as another of these synergy creatures that works with lands in our graveyard, as the Reclaimer gets plus 2 plus 2 as long as there are 3 or more land cards in our graveyard, and for 2 mana we can tap it and sacrifice a land to search our library for any land card and put it on the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle our library. So unlike with the Knight of the Reliquary of course we can't really use this to ramp, but it's still a way to potentially fix our mana or get more lands in the graveyard. And then looking at the rest of the deck, we also have 4 copies of Maelstrom Pulse as a nice versatile removal spell. Also comes in handy against the Field of the Dead decks as we can potentially clear every single zombie with a single Maelstrom Pulse. And then at 4 mana we've got 3 copies of Vraska and Golgari Queen, which can destroy opposing permanents with convert mana cost 3 or less. And then the plus ability can also help us sacrifice lands to put additional lands in the graveyard. And then we also have two copies of Sorin, Vengeful Bloodlord. Since we have so many self-mill effects, we can often just minus three Sorin to get back a Terravor or Knight of the Reliquary from the graveyard. And giving those lifelink can also be a big deal, especially against opposing aggro decks. And then last but not least, we have two copies of Find Finality. We can use Find to get back two creatures from the graveyard, which plays well with all those self-mill effects. And then Finality can be a powerful sweeper, giving everything minus four minus four, as well as putting two plus one plus one counters on one of our creatures if we want to. And then the mana base, we don't have a ton of uh, utility lands in the deck, which is sometimes the direction we want to be headed with uh, cards like Knight of the Reliquary and Elvish Reclaimer, since you get access to basically every single land in the deck. But to keep the mana base consistent, the only utility land in the deck is uh, one copy of Bujuka Bog, which we can search up to function as Graveyard Hate, although we don't want to use it too often, since it can potentially also shrink down the uh, Terravor, so we want to use it sparingly. And then we've got a pretty straightforward mana base otherwise. Another important card, of course, Fabled Passage, as another fetch land that will end up in the graveyard to grow the team. But I don't think we want to go as far as to play cards like Evolving Wilds, since I still want to be able to curve out with uh, Reclaimer into a 2-drop into a 3-drop, which doesn't work out if we play a ton of tap lands like Evolving Wilds. So we've got 1 Plains, 2 Swamps and 3 Forests that we can search up with Fabled Passage. We've got uh, 2 Isolated Chapels, 2 Woodland Cemeteries, and to some petal groves as check lands that play well with our shock lands. And we have four temple garden and four overgrown tomb. So all the green shock lands in these colors. Since we of course need to prioritize the double green on Terravor and playing out the Elvish Reclaimer on turn one. So 25 lands total. Want to make sure we have a healthy 
amount of lands in the deck so that if we do play these self mill effects we actually hit a couple lands which is the main goal of playing these in the first place. I did at some point also play Fall of the Thran in this deck which is a pretty cool combo with Terravore and Nether Reliquary as we'll end up putting even more lands in graveyards and you can also potentially use Nether the Reliquary to fetch up Bujuka Bog to exile the opponent's graveyards so they can't get back their lands on the second and third chapters but that also involves having a plains or a forest in hand that we can play after we destroy all the lands with Fall of the Thran and often I end up sacrificing a bunch of lands to Vraska, so we don't want to have too many expensive spells in the deck. So Fall of the Thran just ended up being a little bit too inconsistent, so it ended up getting cut. But if you want to spice up the deck a little bit, it's a pretty interesting addition. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this sounds okay. Got a... Decide if I want to play Reclaimer on 1, or make sure I can play Shaman on 2. Probably better to Shaman on 2. Just get a forest here. And then we've got a turn 3 Reclaimer plus Binding. Turn 4 Sorin. Maybe get something back from the graveyard that we milled over. Facing a blue red deck. Shard, of course. Discards Arclight Phoenix. Alright, so it's an Arclight Phoenix deck. Well, Bujuka Box, not bad. Don't have to play it this turn. Can probably wait a turn. And then uh, next turn we can maybe exile a bunch of their stuff. See the uh, finale of Promise. Pretty good card too. Entrancing Melody could be... Pretty brutal if they steal my Terravore. Hopefully they discard another Phoenix here. Just a land. I guess I can just exile the Phoenix with Binding, which is I guess why they didn't discard another one. So if they have another Finale, do I want to get rid of a Charred Course? I guess they have two of those, so it makes more sense to get rid of the Opts. And then I can wait on uh, playing Bujuka Bog, just play Sorin for now. Don't think I minus, just gonna plus. Shock on the Glowspore. So now they've got another cheap instant to maybe get back with a Finale Promise. Crackling Drake, I can pulse. And then what do I return? Between Glowspore, Shaman and Triton, I guess Shaman deals a bit more damage and mills more cards. But I'm gonna have to pulse to save Sorin. I wonder if I should hold on to this Bujuka Bog. I abhor my need for blood. Nah, I think I'm fine to play it right now. Lava Coil deals with a Reclaimer. Another Pulse is good insurance. So I guess we'll Shaman first. Hope to find a nice juicy Terravore. Another Knight works too. Do not provoke, and I require your body, not 
Shock kills Shaman. Hopefully no entrancing melody, because then Maelstrom Pulse would get a little awkward. It's gonna be Crackling Drake instead. And Electromancer, so that should put him dead on board. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat Blue Red Phoenix. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and... Yeah, the sand's reasonable. We'll need to draw third land, but worst case scenario, the binding can get it back from the graveyard. And we get to have a nice curve out draw with uh, Reclaimer into Triton otherwise. Turn 1 Siren Storm Tamer, so some sort of blue white flyers deck, and there's land 3, perfect. Luckily, mill the land, so I will be able to play Terravore on 3. Sometimes, when you have a Terravore, it can be correct to play Binding instead of the creature, since it ends up uh, milling more cards to put lands in graveyard for Terravore. But uh, you also want to increase the pressure with the creatures, so it's a difficult balance to strike. Did not expect green mana, so it's some sort of Season of Growth aura deck, perhaps. Well, still just going to play the Terravore here. And then next turn I can decide between pumping up my creatures, maybe, or killing something with Vraska. Curious Obsession. It's going to draw a bunch of cards. And then all that glitters, so our opponent's going all in here. Alright, this is going to be good. And even get to fetch to pump up my Terraform by one. And if we get lucky with Binding, I could be giving Terravore up to plus six plus six next turn. Vraska can also sack a land. So there's a chance we could have lethal. Depends what's on top of our decks. Binding can also mess up the opponent's cry here for what it's worth. Maelstrom Pulse could also be quite good here. Let's start by casting the Binding. Opponent responds with Karmatra's Blessing, sure. Because they really wanted to draw whatever was on top here. This is now indestructible. But I could blow up the Season if I wanted to. So if I attack with everyone, they could eat my Triton. But then they would be dead if I sack a land. So that means they'll be forced to block Reclaimer. Or maybe the Terravor. So we'll... Plus here. So yeah, they can't afford to block the Triton. So I'm just gonna attack with all and kill the Season. One mana set us in training. But yeah, opponent's pretty far behind. A 6-6 six, six trample for three mana is not a bad deal, and it's gonna just keep on growing. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's very slow. No two mana play. But I have two draw steps to find something to fill the graveyard on turn two. And then the upside is pretty high. I'll try it. Soul Warden, the Mono White Life Gain deck is a pretty tough matchup. But uh, we did find the Mire Triton, so that gives me a play for next turn at least.
the Death Touch on the Triton can at least hold off the Pride Mates. The biggest problem card by far is Heliot, which we can't really kill. The Alsaid could save the Pride Mates from the Death Duchy Mar Triton. Yeah, probably still block. And then do I play one of my creatures out? Only the one landing graveyards. Probably gonna just uh, pulse the pride mates. There's Heliots. Maybe the way I play this is just to wait and try and set up a finality. And the knight also ramps me into finality if I draw lands. So I guess now the hope is that their creatures stay below for toughness. And that we draw lands for finality. Their ascendants. Are they going to diversify a little bit? Nope, 5-5 five, five wardens, so that's already a bit of a problem. Another Milstrom pulse wouldn't be bad. They can give it lifelink. They've got another play lined up. Nope. They do nothing. Well, could cast Finality here. I'm very surprised they didn't give Lifelink, because that also would have uh, meant a 6-6 six, six Ascendance, so... Yeah, I guess it's time to Finality here. So I'll float some mana. Get a Fable Passage for good measure. A range of Eos, getting two more Saracenans is going to be tough. Got to draw Maelstrom Poles pretty much. Terravore is not too big at the moment, uh, can only play two creatures this turn, so we'll go Knight plus Terravore. More Soul Wardens. Helia turns into a creature.
Don't even know if a uh, single Maelstrom Pulse is enough. But it's a start. Vanguard for more life gain. Yeah, it's not looking good. Without Helia, that could have been a little bit more manageable, but uh, counters make it pretty difficult to uh, make our creatures big enough. Now I can ambush one of these Soul Wardens at least, by getting another Fable Passage, and then I can trade for Ranger, and then gotta chump Heliot, so it's not pretty, but gotta do what you gotta do. Reclaimer, that's not a Maelstrom Pulse, so I think we're dead now to the Ascendants. Could attack, hoping they take it, so their life total falls below the threshold. It's probably my best bets. Put on chumps. Yeah, I mean, with the Pulse here, we're kind of stable. But sadly, we don't have it. GG's. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn to Glowspore or Triton. Probably leaning Glowspore. Alright, so if we're up against the mill deck, Terravore definitely becomes a more imposing threat. Same with the Knight of the Relquery. I guess I could also fetch with the Fable Passage here. Make sure I can play my 2-drop uh, and 3-drop on Curve. Getting a swamp. Do I put a land back? I don't think I do. It is a way to put an extra card in my library, which is good against the mill deck, but I kind of want to have as many lands in graveyard as possible. Opponent may be keeping up a counter spell here, though. Which is going to make it more difficult, so... Don't really want to trade. Can jam a 3-drop anyway. Or I can just bait with a 2-drop here. Binding could be okay. If they're using Wizard's Retort, they probably don't have a 3-mana counter, which would otherwise be more mana efficient. So can maybe attempt to play a 3-drop next turn, but if they also had an opt, I guess it still makes sense to maybe double spell here. Naban. Alright, pretty nifty with the Apprentice. Well, I'm gonna start playing these threats out. We'll start with the Knights. Terravore is the more valuable threat, because of Trample, I think. 
another Wizards for Shorts. So we're down to 35 cards on Library. But our opponent's almost on empty, so hopefully they don't have a way to refuel. Secret Keeper is going to mill a bunch too. But uh, yeah, the Star of Horror is going to kill them pretty quickly. Twelve, twelve, trample, no big deal. So just gotta kill them before they mill us out. Still got a couple cards left. Alright, so this turn I could go Glow Spore plus Knight of the Reliquary. Maybe my Triton's better. Mill's a bit less in case I do end up decking. But also played pre combats to maybe pump the Terravore. If I want to minimize the mill, I could also play Vraska and kill the Drowned Secrets. Might do that next turn. Find Finality is also quite good here, so... Hopefully we have another land left in the deck I can get. Could get Fable Passage, but just to be safe, in case I counter this, I'll get a basic. Cast Finality. And if they can't counter this, they're dead. Ah, they do have a Thought Collapse. But that's gonna mean more lands for the Terravore, which is still gonna be lethal here. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. And yeah, this seems reasonable. Can fetch a Swamp, turn to Triton, turn three Triton. Turn for Vraska, maybe. And then find can get back whatever three drops we mill. Knight of the Reliquary, good pickup. Ooh, facing a discard deck. Frasca could kill the Waste Knot, but it's gonna be a couple turns still. I discard a Triton, give them a 2 2 token. And then now I can play Knights. Hope they can't kill it. And next turn, Vraska can kill the Waste Knots. They are red black. Alright, Nightmare kills a Triton. And it does exile my graveyard on the third chapter, which could be a problem. It's an aggressive attack. I guess I do want to kill the Nightmare, because it also takes away my Find Finality and exiles my graveyard, so it's going to get multiple cards of value otherwise. I won't 
Could attack, could stay back to save Raska. If they go land to Rankle, I'm gonna be sad if I stay back. Because then I could get in for six. I'll stay back. It's gonna be a Davriel instead. Discard a Reclaimer. A mind is a terrific thing to waste. And then end of turn, get a Fable Passage. Soren's decent. Can't quite finish off Davriel, but it's close. I think I still play Soren plus. Could minus getting back not much. Attack Davriel. Make him chump with the rats. I guess the upside of minusing here is that I get a blocker to protect my other planeswalkers. Reclaimer wouldn't be bad to get back as a 3-4. Otherwise, plusing twice could finish off Davrail, but they're likely minusing next turn, and then I can plus next turn. Alright, let's get back uh, Reclaimer here. And I didn't think we sacrifice anything here. That way Vraska could also minus next turn on the Waste Knots. We will be empty-handed. So this kills Davriel. This will kill the Waste Knots. I guess we can attack first. I'll leave the Reclaimer on defense. And then I can use Reclaimer end of turn to maybe get another Fable Passage. Sure. So being empty-handed against the discard deck is not necessarily a bad thing. Could have used a Reclaimer before damage, but there's a chance I wanted to get Bujuka Bog in response to one of their effects. So keeping that flexibility is still worthwhile. Exile some creatures. And then is there another knight we can get back? There is. That's probably worth it. And then I can attack with both. Now, do I actually have another basic left in the deck? I should have another... Swamp, I believe. Probably should have put a stop on upkeep to fetch before my draw step. Alright, let's see how they deal with double Knight of the Relquery. No Maelstrom Pulse to worry about. That's one of the concerns against Black Green if you've got multiple of the same creature in play. All right, sweet. Yeah, that was all right. That's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.